Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a thriller and crime movie from 2013 called Now You See Me. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. FBI agent Dylan is on the case of a bank robbery. He and his partner start by questioning a man who was manipulated by magicians during the robbery. Unfortunately, they find out nothing because the magicians had hypnotized the man during their show and he remained under their influence. Next, they turn their attention to the group known as the Horsemen, who cleverly deceive them and escape without leaving any trace. The police, unable to gather any evidence, are forced to let them go. However, Dylan is determined to crack the case and learns about a magician named Thaddeus who had previously exposed the tricks of other magicians and had been present at the show. Hoping to gain some insights, Dylan seeks Thaddeus' help. During their discussion, the story of Lionel Shrike, a renowned magician whose career Thaddeus had ruined, comes up. Despite his downfall, Lionel didn't give up and continued to create new magic tricks. Tragically, Lionel dies while performing one of these tricks. When asked if he feels responsible for Lionel's death, Thaddeus denies it, attributing Lionel's death solely to the risky nature of his trick. Thaddeus then reveals how the horsemen managed to pull off the bank robbery. They had hypnotized the man from whom they needed the bank details. Underneath the stage, they constructed a replica of the bank so the man did not teleport to Paris as it seemed, but simply went below the stage. This is how the money vanished from the bank and appeared there. Thaddeus speculates that the theft might have occurred during the transfer of the money. In place of the real cash, duplicate bills made of fire paper, which burns easily, were substituted. This meant that the fake money could be quickly destroyed. Next, we see the horsemen performing in another show, which Dylan and Thaddeus also attend. During this performance, they invite a businessman named Arthur, who is funding their show, to participate in their final trick. Dylan prompts the audience to check their bank account balances. Then, Henley presents a large check showing the amount from Arthur's private bank account. Merritt then asks the audience to check their balances again, and this time, to everyone's surprise, their balances had increased. Simultaneously, the equivalent amount of money was being drained from Arthur's account. As a result, the people at the show ended up receiving all of Arthur's money, leaving his account empty. The horsemen reveal that they had specifically chosen audience members who had suffered losses due to natural disasters and had been denied insurance claims by Arthur's company. Thus, the money from Arthur's bank account was redistributed to them as compensation. After explaining this, the horsemen disappeared from the scene. Dylan attempted to catch them but was unable to, as they had already made their escape. The following day, Dylan's partner explains to him about the community of magicians known as the Eye. They are known for redistributing wealth by stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, and they tackle wrongful acts around the world. She believes the horsemen aspire to join this group, which is why they're engaging in these activities. Dylan ponders this and suggests that there might be a fifth member working with the horsemen, aiding them in their endeavors. Soon after, Dylan encounters an issue with his phone and discovers it isn't his. It turns out Daniel had swapped their phones. All the messages and calls on the phone have been tracked. From this, Dylan manages to locate where the horsemen had been residing for the past year. By the time Dylan arrives, the horsemen have already cleared out most evidence, except for Jack, who is caught burning papers. As Dylan approaches, the other three horsemen have already fled, leaving Jack behind. Jack tries to finish his task and escape with the papers, leading to a confrontation with Dylan, but manages to flee. Suddenly, an intense chase ensues with FBI cars pursuing Jack's vehicle, intent on capturing him and retrieving the documents. Tragically, Jack's car crashes, resulting in his death. Dylan quickly retrieves the documents from the car right before it explodes. These papers reveal the horseman's next target, a private security contractor involved in a million-dollar corruption scandal, which was also under investigation by the government and Dylan. From the stolen documents, Dylan learns that all the money is stored in a secure locker located in a house. The FBI team heads to secure a locker, but upon arrival, they discover the house is empty and the locker is missing. Further investigation reveals that Dylan's superior had authorized the transfer of the box, suggesting that the horseman had hypnotized him. While tracking down the truck believed to be carrying the box, Dylan and his team find that it contains only balloons, not the expected contents. Meanwhile, the horsemen release a YouTube video announcing their upcoming and final show, detailing the time and location, and inviting everyone to attend for free. The FBI team learns about this and decides to attend the show as well. At the event, the magicians perform a live broadcast from inside the building, projecting the show onto a screen. The performance continues until they move to the building's roof. The FBI follows, intending to apprehend them there. 
However, upon reaching the roof, they realize they cannot make any arrests because the figures they find are merely puppets, not the actual horsemen. The FBI agents observe the magicians on top of another building. After interacting with their friends, the magicians jump off the building, but it turns out they were just projections, not actually there. Simultaneously, money starts to fly around, causing a frenzy as people rush to collect it. However, one FBI agent realizes the money is counterfeit, leading to a new question. Where is the real money? As Thaddeus goes to his car and attempts to lock it, money starts pouring out from it. This surprising occurrence leads the FBI to believe that Thaddeus either stole the money himself or someone planted it in his car. Consequently, Thaddeus is arrested by the police. Dylan, suspecting Thaddeus could be the fifth member of the horseman, visits him in jail. During their conversation, Thaddeus tells Dylan that he understands how the magicians executed their plan. He reveals that Jack, previously thought to be dead, is actually alive. Thaddeus explains that the car the FBI was chasing, which they believed Jack was in, was actually one of several decoys. Jack was not in that car at all. Thaddeus then explains to Dylan about the missing locker in the house. He reveals that it was a trick involving a strategically placed mirror that made the locker seem invisible, giving the illusion that the house was empty. He continues, saying that while Dylan was searching elsewhere, Jack came in, broke the mirror and the locker, and took all the money. Dylan, puzzled, questions how someone could fake their own death and take such risks without even keeping the money. Thaddeus admits that this part of the scheme is still unclear to him. Dylan then tells Thaddeus that he now understands the entire plot. As Thaddeus turns away, the film reveals a key mystery. Dylan quickly leaves the jail, suggesting to Thaddeus that perhaps the motive behind these elaborate schemes was revenge against Lionel Strike, whom Thaddeus had exposed and whose life he had ruined. Dylan mentions the specific locker used during the incident, hinting at a deeper connection. The locker involved in the incident was originally manufactured by the alcohol company that owned the bank targeted by the horsemen. A malfunction in this locker led to the tragic death of Lionel Strike. Following Lionel's death, Althor, the company he worked for, failed to claim life insurance benefits for his family. This prompted the removal of money from Arthur's account as part of a larger scheme of vengeance. The horsemen orchestrated this elaborate revenge not just for themselves but also on behalf of Lionel Shrike, effectively ensnaring everyone involved. In a pivotal moment, as Thaddeus turns away to ponder, Dylan suddenly leaves, revealing a major twist in the film. He is the fifth horseman. It is also disclosed that Dylan is Lionel Shrike's son, driven by a desire to avenge his father and his family against those he holds responsible for his father's demise. The mysterious man we saw at the beginning of the movie who was watching them closely turns out to be Dylan. Now the four horsemen head to Los Angeles. In the city, they discover a tree dedicated to Lionel Shrike, marked with a distinctive symbol. When they place their cards on this symbol, they witness a spectacular display of lights, songs, and swings turn on. Here, they meet Dylan. Seeing him, they become happy and they understand Dylan has called them together. Dylan is the fifth horseman and he also worked for the I community. Now, Dylan welcomes them in the I community. With it, this movie ends here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.